Hare Krishna, everyone, and welcome back again to our lectures on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatari All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> so, before we begin, I would like to recite two very beautiful verses from Sri Rupa Goswami's Padyavali to uh, honor the great souls like Srila Prabhupada and our previous Acharyas who are uh, guiding us on this path home uh, back to the spiritual world, most notably Sri Vrindavan Dham. The first is um, text 54 from Padyavali. <coughs> Let us bow to them whose radiant sandals deliver those stuck in the dried mud of the ocean of life. By hearing the two syllables Krishna from them, all our hairs dance as we are overcome by bliss. The text 55. <coughs> o earth, for as long as the sun and moon do shine, please bear that best of men that pious person whose mind is motionless with joy as he remembers Hari, whose body bristles, whose eyes overflow with tears of bliss. Why bear the burden of those others who have resolved to come and go in this abode of birth and death? <coughs> Isn't that wonderful? So we are continuing with our mini-series on stimulation for ecstatic love, and this will be part 97. As most of you know, we have been discussing the first of Krishna's four transcendental qualities that distinguish him from Lord Narayan. Again, namely, he is the performer of wonderful varieties of pastimes, especially his childhood pastimes. So for the last few lectures, we've been focusing on these childhood pastimes, and with great pleasure, will continue to do so in this lecture. Now, at the beginning of his childhood, called Komara, Krishna, I was reading, is actually very chubby. <laughs> and his limbs are described as tender as blue lotuses. And the edges of his eyes are white, and his small teeth are just beginning to show. And the Acharyas say that during this time, Mother Yasoda can't take her eyes off her son as he sucks his big toe and throws his legs up in the air while sometimes crying and sometimes laughing. Now, Srila Rupa Goswami writes about this early stage of Krishna's life in his Padyavali, uh, text 107. It's very beautiful. He writes, When can I see Krishna, lovely and alluring, like a blooming blackwood, his lotus face pressed to his mother's breast while he wiggles his lotus toes. Rupa Goswami. So I was reading that during this period of Krishna's life, Madhya Soda covers Krishna with uh, protective charms and every morning she hangs a, a tiger's claw around his neck. She also ties a cord around his waist and a string around his wrist and then paints a tilak marks on different parts of his body. <coughs> then she smears mascara around Krishna's eyes to uh, protect him from the glare of the sun. And towards the end of this first stage of childhood, Krishna, as described, occasionally crawls about. But when he reaches the middle part of this period of his childhood, um, he He's rarely dressed in clothes and becomes proficient at crawling, it's described. He, he's rarely dressed in clothes and he becomes quite proficient at crawling. <coughs> and at that time, he pleases his parents with a charming way he speaks in broken language and begins to form words. But I was thinking perhaps the most notable feature of this period is Krishna's discovery that he can have food stuff other than his mother's breast milk. Like what? Butter and yogurt, which he relishes with enthusiasm. And during this period, 
Um, Madhya Soda often takes Krishna in her lap and showers him with her bhav, with her, with her love. And in this regard, Sri Rupa Goswami describes Madhya Soda very beautifully in verse 128 of his Padyavali. He writes, Her lotus navel child in her lap, her complexion like new clouds, garbed in multicolored clothes, I constantly bow down to Yashoda, who delights the whole world. I constantly bow down to Yashoda, who delights the whole world. All glories to Shri Rupa Goswami. Now during the, the final stage of Krishna's childhood, we're moving on here, um, years one to five actually, th that area of um, Gopastami, Krishna is on his feet walking about and at this stage, he and his friends begin again to herd calves and play games in the fields just outside uh, Gokula. But the Acharya said they don't go very far. They remain under the watchful eyes of the older cowherd men. But it's good training. The Acharya is right at this particular period of Krishna's childhood. Dressed in a short dhoti, Krishna carries a stick in his hand in, in imitation of the coward men and wears a peacock feather in his hair which is braided and tied in a top knot. Why all this? You know, details? Because love is in the details. And this is how we fall in love with Krishna. <laughs> the Acharyas go on to say, there in the nearby pasturing grounds, Krishna eats his lunch, not at home, as previously, but with his friends. And actually, I found many descriptions of this uh, noontime pastime in, in my readings, especially last week, where Krishna takes prasadam with his friends each day. It's always a big thing. And it's all about eating. You know, boys will be boys. And it's always done in a fun and loving way, with lots of joking. And it's amazing, Sridhar Prabhupada refers to this joking mood in a purport in Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 13, 11. He writes, and I'm quoting Sridhar Prabhupada, When Krishna was eating with his coward boyfriends, a certain bumblebee came there to take part in the eating. Then Krishna joked, Why have you come to disturb my Brahmin friend Madhu Mangal? Do you want to kill a Brahmin? This is not very good. <laughs> then Prabhupada continues, All the boys would laugh and enjoy speaking such joking words while eating. Thus the inhabitants of Shvargaloka, the higher planets, were astonished at how the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who eats only when Yajna, Yajna by Vishnu, is offered, was now eating like an ordinary child with his friends in the forest. <laughs> this is Braj. Now in Srimad Bhagavatam uh, 10 8 29, we hear about the elder gopis famously complaining about Krishna's childhood activities. This is a central theme in Dhammadar Leela. Oh, dear friend Yashoda, your son sometimes comes to our houses before the milking of the cows and releases the calves. And when the master of the house becomes angry, your son merely smiles. Sometimes he devises some process by which he steals palatable yogurt, it's written, butter and milk, which he then eats and drinks. When the monkeys assemble, he divides it with them. And when the monkeys have their bellies so, have their bellies so full, they won't take more, he breaks pots. Sometimes, if he gets no opportunity to steal butter or milk from a house, he will be angry at the householders, and for his revenge, he will agitate the small children by pinching them. Then, when the children begin crying, Krishna goes away. Gopis. <coughs> so, if we analyze that, there we see the gopis are directly accusing Krishna of stealing butter. Now, there are many commentaries, let us say there are many commentators, who give various arguments to 
could you say? Protect Krishna from the allegation of stealing. He, your God's a thief. <laughs> so there's many commentators who give various arguments to protect Krishna from the allegation of stealing. Like some say that, well, everything belongs to Krishna. Others may say, well, the gopis wanted uh, Krishna to steal, so he is simply fulfilling their desire. Nothing like that. <laughs> However, our illustrious, famous uh, poet, Sri Hari Suri, I was reading, he gives a brilliant argument to protect Krishna from this allegation of stealing. He writes as follows. Krishna thought, he begins, Krishna thought, in all those beautiful homes, there is milk, yogurt, etc., that has to be stolen, has to be stolen. However, I should never get implicated into the act. Thus, wherever I go to steal, I will make sure that the boy of the home is also present with me. Thinking in this way, Krishna always took the boy of the home with him whenever he would steal from a particular home. Krishna's logic here is that if the boy at the home knows about the stealing, well, technically it's not stealing. Krishna is simply assisting the boy of the home to take milk and yogurt from his own home. So in this way, Harisui protects Krishna from the allegation of, of stealing that was given by those elderly gopis. Now then, Harisui explains that actually Krishna, ne Krishna never ate anything alone. Even when he stole yogurt, he said, or butter, he always divided it between his friends. This is because Krishna was following an eternal rule, he calls it an eternal rule, that he himself has mentioned in the Vedas. For in the Rig Veda 10, 17, 6, it said, Kevalaga Kevaladi Bhavatiti Shrutim Shmaram Yuktam Evaga Hatosho Tatva Nebyo Jagashtata. Very simply put, one who eats alone eats only sin. Interesting, isn't it? One who eats alone eats only sin. And Harisui writes, remembering his own words in the Vedas, because Krishna is the source of the Vedas, our Krishna never ate alone. He first distributed to others, and then he ate himself. Thank you, Hari Suri. So I was thinking, this is actually uh, a very important instruction for all of us. For in the modern world, people often eat you know, food alone, for example, in an office cubicle or whatever. But our Vaishnava tradition tells us to eat with family or in particular to eat with other Vaishnavas. And if nobody is available, I was reading in Shastra, one should mentally dedicate a morsel of food to an insect, a bird, or an animal. It's in the Shastra. <laughs> if you're alone, there's no one around, then mentally you should dedicate a morsel of food to an insect, a bird, or an animal. An animal. My dear insect, please. <laughs> in this way, one should never eat alone. Now, Harisuri, um, gives another reason why Krishna fed butter, yogurt, etc. to the monkeys. It's because he felt that, Krishna felt that he had not sufficiently <laughs> reciprocated with them in Treta Yuga as Lord Ramachandra when they helped him fight the war with Ravana and build a bridge over to Lanka. Thus, Krishna in Dupura Yuga reciprocated by feeding them with sneha. Now, um, Harishwari says that um, sneha in Sanskrit is one meaning, one meaning is butter, B but another meaning of sneha is affection, as, as we know. Thus, this great scholar, Harishwari says, so beautiful, Krishna was, feeding, Krishna was feeding them sneha, affection for him, while feeding them sneha, butter, to the monkeys. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Krishna was feeding them the monkey sneha, affection for him, while feeding them sneha, butter. Hare Krishna. What a way to end today. Thank you, Arsuri.
Thank you, Rupa Goswami. Thank you, Sri Rupa Alba. That's it for today. Um, we have, we're still on these first of the four qualities. You know, Krishna's four transcendental qualities. First, and I, we have more information about Krishna's childhood pastime, and that's good because you know Kartik's coming up, and um, we can. The more we know, the more we can embellish the month of Kartik and glorification of Krishna. So, see you with more Dhamodar Leela next Friday. Shishi Gorni Thai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shamashundu Ki, Vrindavaneshwari, Shimati Radharani Ki, Maya Purdam Ki, Gorni Thai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yaya Ki, Nitai Gaur Pivinandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe Sharm, and Glories to Shri